one of the reasons that you came together was to leverage the synergies in terms of the services that are used. Uh, but on the technology side, uh, you know, was there stuff like maybe the fixed mobile convergence and those type of technologies uh, that could potentially be leveraged through this merger? Okay, uh, thanks for that question. I, I think that uh, certainly uh, uh, I, I would say that Siemens was active, active both in fixed and mobile, and, and I think see, uh, Nokia's uh, was predominantly uh, mobile. And certainly, you know, it's one of the one of the big opportunities for for Nokia Siemens Networks is to position as a strong uh, fixed mobile convergence player in, in the industry uh, based on this uh, market presence. I, I think that that's uh, our, our unique position in the industry, being able to play with both fixed and mobile. And have you so far been able to cross-sell, um, you know, uh, to your customers? Uh, absolutely, I think that that's one of the things that our, our customers are interested in, that they see a, a larger, uh, you know, larger, let's say, player in terms of the, and the ability to address, you know, a bigger part of the op operator challenge, mm -hmm. because we are able to play and, and uh, play on both sides of fixed and mobile as well as then we're able to help them address more of their customer segments and more needs, you know, all the way from the consumers to, to the enterprise customers. Martin, uh, a question about the internet services strategy of your parent company, uh, uh, Nokia, or one of your parent companies. Uh, we keep hearing uh, this uh, OV strategy and how Nokia is positioning or repositioning itself as an uh, as an internet services driven company. What does it all mean for uh, Nokia Siemens networks? Does it mean a lot of matched up applications or exactly what? I think for the, um, certainly for the, the service core applications part of the, uh, the company, there's a great opportunity there. We're seeing a lot of the excitement in the industries around the internet applications coming through. But having the scalability to deliver those types of experiences to end users is a key part. And that's really where Nokia Siemens Networks and bring that complete end-to-end -end experience into the marketplace, irrespective of the, uh, the type of access which is being used, so through the fixed, through the mobile, through the broadband wireless uh, connectivity as well. And more than that, actually understanding what's happening with the traffic such that operators can really understand what's being transferred across their network. And again, once you want to understand what's happening there, you can then make decisions on quality of service which again can be used very much to enhance the end user experience. So the, the Nokia uh, OV presence, for example, is very dependent on having that, that good quality of connectivity, and that's really where Nokia Siemens Networks has its, has its great strength. And if you, if you apply that directly to uh, the voice applications, to the you know, uh, telco applications uh, such as voice, are we looking at, uh, you know, um, are we looking at user-defined applications, matched up applications, or are you going to, in a way, uh, you know, prompt for those applications or develop those applications for these users? I think there's, there's a great gambit that we're approaching there. We've got the traditional voice market very much, which is alive and well, uh, and a very large part of, of operators' uh, revenue streams, of course. But there's a lot of potential there in the future with the voice over IP applications where, yes, you can mash them up with other types of services, such as if you're experiencing some kind of video delivery YouTube type thing, then there may also be a, an opportunity there to, to instigate a, a conversation mm. with that ISP provider. So there may be some kind of interaction there in terms of a purchase or some kind of other interactivity. So all these types of things are easily then provided by having our complete converged platform uh, into these different environments from the fixed, the mobile and the IP world. Maybe I can add, add on. I mean, we, see, we see also that uh, you know, this, this kind of business opportunity is, is got kind of going into, into a mode where, where our consulting and our systems integration capability plays a very, very important role. Because our job in the end is basically to, to help make the, the, our customers, the operators, succeed in the market. So it really depends on what is their strategy in terms of what is the offering that they want to bring to their customers, be it you know, uh, voice applications, be it uh, different operator-driven applications like short messaging or multimedia messaging, you know, and then, then you know, working with, through to working with partners such as Nokia, Ovi, and, and then some of the other you know, internet players that are. And obviously these services that we're talking about here, um, 
majority of the revenue is going to be generated, I mean from a carrier's perspective, majority of the revenue is going to be generated by such services plus the content and all the portal kind of services. Uh, so the, the, the infrastructure that they leverage presently to generate majority of the revenues, the scenario is going to change substantially. Uh, and you know, it, to this end, a lot of the majority of the large vendors have now shifted focus uh, towards the services side as well. What is Nokia Siemens' strategy uh, in the managed services uh, area, and is the are these services going to remain confined mainly to maintenance? Okay. When I'm active in the sales, you know, with with, with the customers, you know, when we, we we try to give them choice. And, and choice means also in terms of choice in terms of how they buy from us. So we, we, we have uh, naturally, you know, we have been able to deliver networks uh, to, to our customers, you know, for, for you know, decades. And, and, uh, but, but we see that there is a trend now as well that where the operators are looking at their own business model and they're looking what they want to focus on. And there is a, clearly a trend that, uh, that some, some of the operators are willing to kind of pass the responsibility of managing the, the network and the, the operations uh, you know, to, to the vendor who is you know, best equipped in terms of managing the technology and the various complexities. And, and the processes there, and this has clearly been an, an, an active trend in the market, and which, which we have, uh, have uh, decided to uh, play an active role. Okay. Just a couple more questions. Uh, you're obviously either number one or number two. Or perhaps this is a question for you, mm -hmm. Martin. You're either number one or number two in most of the geographic uh, regions. Uh, but looking at North America, the biggest uh, telecom market. Uh, for now, uh, Nokia Siemens uh, is ranked number six. So what plans do you have in the, in the pipeline to, uh, to fix that? We've got a, a number of initiatives now within North America to really start to readdress the market. We've had some difficulties in the past there, but now we're rebuilding very much. The landscape is changing in North America. There's, there's potentially consolidation still going on within the operator space there. But we do a very strong place, for example, in the, the cable market itself. You have uh, cable vision, I guess. Yes, right. Cable vision is one of your main customers yeah. there. So we can build from these different areas as well. It's not just coming from the, the mobile operator space. We can build from these other spaces towards this kind of converged service delivery. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of initiatives now that we have with our North American organization, which is really looking at how do we take the best, uh, the best way forwards in the North American market. And some of the kind of types of technology we're talking about, obviously, we talked about earlier in terms of looking at the uh, IP multimedia subsystem, moving from the, the fixed uh, the fixed domain, embracing then the mobile domain as well. So lots of opportunities there, we think. And also with the, the change in the, uh, the, the landscape there with the, the WiMAX licenses coming through as well, again, it gives us another entry point there to start to secure some, uh, some new markets. And also a commitment to long-term evolution as a, as a as a radio technology and other ones. So I would say that uh, North American customers have received Nokia CMS networks you know, very, very well, and I think we are active in, uh, with, with all the major uh, carriers there. And while you draft these competitive strategies, I mean, um, you also have um, uh, guys like Huawei and ZTE coming up with China uh, and aggressively competing in you know, all, sort of, all sorts of markets. Um, do you think the industry might be just underestimating uh, companies like Huawei in terms of competition? I, th I think the big differentiator there really is, is as you were saying earlier, looking at the, the presence that we have on a global basis. You know, we've got we're serving over 1.1 billion users every day through our networks. We've got that kind of learning and knowledge that's built into the company. And we can then very much take that forwards to operators to provide complete solutions, end-to-end -end solutions. We've got a, obviously a very strong relationship with our parent companies, with Nokia, to give that device knowledge as well. So building that all together really gives a, a very compelling proposition towards operators. It's not just about some boxes or some kind of system technology. It's having that complete holistic viewpoint and the ability to deliver that wherever in the world as well. And again, so that takes us to the services part, which is where um, companies like yourself probably might have an edge. Okay, well, thank you very much, both of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Great.